Madam Chair, friends and colleagues, I'm truly privileged and honored to be in your midst on this very significant day uh, for the media across the country and indeed in Nagaland. Especially as this institution, which has always been targeted since its inception across the globe, is now particularly under severe stress and unprecedented threat. Both in conflict zones and seemingly democratic and peaceful um, countries and societies. We are often pigeonholed as local, regional, national, international uh, media. But we are one body with numerous limbs and hopefully brightening the corners where we are. That is the core of our job, our vocation, wherever we are. And while we do our job, we rub powerful people the wrong way. Hence, we are perceived as a threat threat to them, and so we are under threat in return. Now with extremely sophisticated um, and um, very smart scientific and technological innovations and inventions, we face newer threats. The 2023 National Press Day theme media in the era of artificial uh, intelligence is indeed very appropriate since today AI is a serious concern across the spectrum and also has enormous uh, ramifications for the media one way or the other. However, I am afraid that the Koima Breast Club will regret inviting me to speak on this thing because I'm not even naturally intelligent, not to mention artificially intelligent. <laughs> Science and technology has always gone over my head and it is with great um, effort I manage to tentatively touch the hands of computer literacy. However, most of you are highly tech savvy, therefore I'm confident that when we, the media, need to welcome AI as a friend or confront it as a foe, we will do it together. So I beg you to bear with my mistakes while addressing you today. In fact, what I will say today is not really a studied speech, but an attempt to weave together my random thoughts on the team. There is an increasing body of uh, information on AI, some of which you may be aware of, and perhaps even applying it. However, it is quite clear that there is, a much, uh, there is much more for us to learn about AI uh, to conclude it as a friend or as a foe. Depending on our motives, agenda, and moral compass, it is. It could be either. So why I why I cannot authoritatively, tentatively say much on the evolving science and technology of AI, I will try to focus on some ethical concerns that have been raised uh, globally regarding AI such as data privacy, algorithm bias, and potential misuse of AI technologies. AI is also set to lack creativity and uh, empathy, limiting its ability to understand emotions and, produ and produce original ideas. Indeed, a very serious concern for the media because our work is meant to be based on creativity, empathy, and originality. 
AI is predicted to grow increasingly pervasive and as, as technology develops, revolutionizing sectors including healthcare, banking and transportation. But what about the media? Will we grow or perish with AI? Technology has increasingly made the human being redundant, leading to unemployment and even ending numerous cultures and uh, creations born of the human heart, mind and hands. As with all technology, AI too would eventually work out much cheaper if used. So wouldn't the media, as an institution, mandated to uphold democratic ethics, cultures, and traditions be a steep price? These are issues we must dwell on and delve into in all seriousness because AI as a foe could very well end all aspects of the very institution of the media. As a friend, AI could enhance the media, but only if we do not let it control us. I mean, this would be difficult because we have seen that the machine has consistently conquered and controlled the human being. Think of social media, both a boon and a bane, underscoring the the user's uh, ethical quotient. Can human beings be trusted not to abuse and misuse AI? What has been the man versus the machine record so far? Particularly just before, during and after the COVID pandemic, uh, we are increasingly being subverted by technology and have become data generators for technology to develop and overwhelm us. Our identity as human beings has been reduced to our number, to our numerous codes and card numbers. In fact, now we simply don't exist without are technologically generated numbers. Then there is the issue of the right to privacy, of which we haven't even started a discourse in Nagaland. Technology is not all inclusive. The existing digital divide is evidence of that. Technology set to make life easier isn't really so because mm, the human being is excluded from the technological uh, technological driven technology driven world during the pandemic millions of children were denied online education spotlighting you know, breaking, you know, center staging, poverty, social, economic, cultural, and political in inequalities. Would AI address these issues and speak truth to power? The same the powers that be who control technology. How would we, as a media, address the increasing invasive nature of AI which is bound to permeate into our politics and governance, cultures and thought processes. Are we aware of the challenges AI will present and are we as the media preparing to confront these challenges? Even in the literary field, are we preparing to, um, you know, confront these challenges 
as apparently AI can replace writers and poets. Are we preparing to protect our autonomy and agency as human beings? Or are we so enamored with name and fame that we will have no compunctions to use AI to make a mark in our journalistic and creative pursuits? Apparently, this is already happening. Everything has two sides to them. So we need to focus equally on them. It is said that one of the main causes of the emergence of terrorism after the end of the Cold War was the withdrawal of humans. That is H-U-M-I-N-T, short for human intelligence. From the ground. Human is the process of gaining intelligence from humans or individuals by analyzing behavior, behavioral responses through direct interaction. And uh, numerous other instances of intelligence failure leading to tragic consequences are also attributed to the reduced importance accorded to humans with the emergence of sophisticated and smarter technology. My point is that the alleged failure to use humans after the end of the Cold War is said to lead to the emergence of terrorism and we know how severely terrorism has affected our world and changed it almost beyond comprehension. So what would be the consequences of AI and subsequent impact on human beings which would cascade into our politics, economics, policies and cultures? Is the media ready? Is the media ready to make sense uh, of the possible changes and somehow guide our readers and viewers to make um, sense of a rapidly changing world in which most of us could probably be excluded and redundant? The media is supposed to be leaders of thoughts opinions and decision-making, not followers. With the emerging AI, how would we rate ourselves in this responsibility of ours on a scale of 1 to 10? Are we going to continue re regurgitating press releases and speeches by all and sundry in our newspapers? Or are we going to dissect and analyze them to enable our readers to make sense of what actually they, I mean these press releases and all, actually uh, what uh, they are saying or not saying in the era of AI, are we going to continue playing the role of the public relation wings of governments and its agencies, other power centers, the corporates and showbiz, or are we, or as an independent and thinking media, the hand that rocks technology will rule the world. And AI will indubitably be in the hands of power, money, and muscle. So how and where do the media see our place in this scenario? So learning, yeah, learning more about AI would serve us well, because it is also our job to study ethical issues involved in the use of 
technology that sidestep the human being and re-engineer and reshape human society and thought processes. Ultimately, it is the human being that ought to dictate and direct the use of AI. But should have, could have, would have is one thing. And the insidious ways of misuse of technology is another. Our relationship with our mobile phones says much. So, so thus our mistaken belief that the internet is the is the repository of all knowledge and wisdom, thereby rendering ourselves to receptacles of information, data and statistics, most of which we cannot dissect, analyze, make sense of and utilize to improve our lives and relationships. The media also needs to question what our governments and corporates are selling us in education, health, uh, agriculture, infrastructure development, everything, um, including, including our political, social, economic and cultural narratives. And, and we need to inform our findings to our people. Take education or health, for instance. We need to question whether AI would rescue or read us. What is our reaction and response to unethical practices in these sectors and so many other sectors? Would AI in the health sector detect unethical practices? How will AI help human society in terms of progress versus profit. Who benefits and who loses vis-a-vis -vis the application of technology? How closely linked are politics and economics to technology? In terms of development, how closely linked is technology to geography? many questions need to be asked, but indisputably it is the human value system and human moral compass that will determine the fruitful use or wanton abuse of technology. Moreover, moreover what would be the shape, content, and character of the media in the era of AI um, is not only what uh, the media, you know, what we would be, is not only what the media makes of AI, but more crucially, what society and state, state makes of AI. Because the media is an integral part of society and state. So, so then, we must necessarily study the objectives, the goals, and the goal, uh, sorry, objectives, the agenda, and the goals <coughs> of society and sta state, and where they envisage to take the state, say, <coughs> five to ten years from now. For the media, For the media, what narratives can we script on these objectives, agenda and goals and convince, inform and convince our people that they are either positive or negative. I think that media in the era of AI has more to do with enabling and empowering citizens to fully comprehend and control technology to script their own narratives. Not 
not be beguiled by those with economic, political and cultural power that have a lot to lose when people think independently and act ethically. So it is important that technology must also be owned by the people and this is where the media must play its leadership role by play, placing the human being at the center of the era of AI. The wonders of technology are numerous and indescribable. However, seeing that there is no dirt of intelligence, AI being a result, being a proof, I wonder why this intelligence has not been used to innovate and invent artificial common sense, which, Madam Chair, friends and colleagues, you will agree, is in very short supply in today's technology-driven world. Thank you.